Hey guys, what is up? And I welcome you to another episode of the Digino series. For this episode, I wanted to switch things up once again and do another theory type video. And if you haven't already guessed, this video is going to be focusing primarily on Braum. There's an interesting take about his lore that suggests that he's potentially a lot older than he really is, and more or less suggests that the whole story that is being told in his lore, which is a grandma telling her granddaughter a story about Braum, a hero, is all more or less a lie. Again, don't forget this is simply a theory video. It's not necessarily saying that any of this is true, it's all for fun. And I am going to be using a reddit thread made by the community, specifically someone named Eye of the Poodle. The reddit thread will be linked in the description under this video, so if you want to have a read for yourself, definitely check it out. So let's dive right into it and begin with the simple question, why is this assumption being made? Much like the Jarvan and LeBlanc video, it is off of one picture, but this time it is not an artwork, it is simply a question. As you can see in this picture, a very interesting question was asked. And it states, in Brahm's character piece, the grandmother telling his story claims that her own grandmother told her stories of Brahm as well. Which naturally says that Brahm is most likely a very old person. But in the game, he clearly does not look very old. So this begs the question, is he simply just a lot older than he really looks? Or is the story of Brahm something that is just told as folklore? Now it does go a bit more in depth from this, however, this is a good start. But something that makes this even more interesting is how the Riot employee responded. But there is a second question that somewhat relates to the first and Brahm's lore in general. How does Ash know Brahm? And it simply just states how Ash heard of the tales of Brahm and what he can do. And from that she simply seeked him out and asked him to join her cause. A cause to unite Freljord. Now of course looking at this at plain sight, nothing looks suspicious or interesting. But when you finally dive into certain champions lore, things get heated up really quickly. For instance, let's take a look at Ash's lore. There are of course a lot of interesting things within Ash's lore, however, a specific paragraph is potentially related to Brahm. And it states, as a child, Ash was always a dreamer. She marveled at the colossal abandoned fortress of her ancestors, and spent hours by the fire listening to the tales of the Freljord's fabled champions. Now the last three words might be referring to Brahm. And of course it also states as a child she was interested in all these, which might refer to the little girl within Brahm's lore of which the grandmother is telling the story. But in order for this to make more sense, there's a few more champions that must be mentioned. Specifically Lysandra and Trundle. If you're unaware, within Brahm's lore it does state how he saved a troll child from a cave within a mountain that was blocked off by Lysandra's enchanted door, which is now of course his shield. But let's take a quick look at a specific area of Brahm's lore. You can see that near the end it states how the entrance, guarded by a huge stone door, which is what you saw in the picture earlier, has a shard of true ice at its center. Now the reason that the door had true ice is important becomes more clear when we jump into Trundle's lore. The part of Trundle's lore we're about to go through is a little long, so bear with me. But it states, he outmuscled the ice witch's guards and outsmarted her dark magic traps. But nothing he scavenged matched the power he described to his kin. Finally, he found an unexpected prize, a huge and magical club of never melting true ice. Grasping the weapon, he marveled at the cold power that ran through him, but then the wrathful ice witch herself appeared. As she summoned her dark magic, Trundle believed that he had met his end, but another clever idea struck him. With a knowing grin, he offered the ice witch a devious proposition. A troll army, he told her, would be of much more use to her than one troll corpse. So from all this, things seem to be making a bit more sense, and we can begin to make the assumption that the troll boy that is trapped behind Lysandra's door is Trundle. But things still seems somewhat foggy in certain areas. For instance, why is Trundle depicted as a young troll boy? Well, this is finally when we have to dive into the Ice Queen's lore herself. Lysandra. There's an interesting passage within her lore that I want to talk to you guys about, which may explain as to why Trundle is depicted as a small young troll, assuming that is him. It states, Over the course of generations, she rewrote the stories of the Freljord, and so the history of its people changed. Today, the fragmented retellings of the Watchers are seen as children's tales. But this deception wasn't enough, Lysandra also needed an army. So the main thing to know within this passage is the fact that Lysandra rewrote the stories of the Freljord. And the second thing to note is that these new retellings of the Watchers are now seen as children's tales. So from this we can make several assumptions. One is the fact that Lysandra as she was busy wiping the Watchers stories off the map, hence rewriting the stories of the Freljord. She picked up Trundle and his army. And she rewrote that part as well, depicting Trundle as a helpless young troll. And not a troll leading an army looking for a weapon that would 
soon bring Lysandra the army she needed. And then of course it goes back to Braum and how it earlier stated how today the fragmented retellings of the Watchers are seen as children's tales. Which is quite literally what is happening within Braum's lore, it is a children's tale that her grandmother is telling her granddaughter. So this can mean that maybe Braum was actually a Watcher, and everything mentioned within the story is a simple cover up by Lysandra. But even if that were the case, how did Braum get this shield to begin with? A lot of really interesting points have been mentioned throughout this video that still somewhat leaves this question open ended. Which is where I want you guys to come in. Down below under this video, tell me what do you think? How do you truly think that this ended? Do you think Braum is a Watcher? Do you think that Lysandra's retellings of the story is true? Do you think it's false? What do you think? Clearly everything seems to more or less fit together other than the fact that Braum somehow got his shield. But it still is somewhat of a mind teaser that is very interesting to think about. So with that being said, that does mark the end of this video guys. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to throw in a like down below. If there are other interesting theories that you guys have, definitely write them in the comments below and I will try to explore it as well. If you guys can follow me on my Facebook and Twitter fan page, I would really much appreciate it. And also if you can check out my sponsor, Skins for Law, for cheap, rare law skins. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you next time. Peace.